Welcome to the first accompaniment to the seventh video in my series on using the TI-83 series calculator. This video will focus on some of the more advanced features of the graphing functions of the calculator. I'm going to go quite a bit faster in this video, but feel free to pause and rewatch what you need to. You could also skip this video entirely if you don't want to watch it, and you shouldn't have any problem in college algebra without it. First, let's take a look at two of the zooming features that I skipped in the last video. Now to understand these, you may want to first understand that all the zoom features do is change the settings in the window menu. So after you do them, you can actually go to the window menu and see what's changed. Now let's take a look at Z square. Z standard shows you the values from negative 10 to 10 on the X axis and negative 10 to 10 on the Y axis. But there's a problem with that. The screen is wider than it is tall. That means that the graph is going to be stretched horizontally. That's where Z square comes in. Basically, Z square accounts for the width of the screen and changes the X values to adjust. It makes these adjustments no matter where you're zoomed into, too. Zoom fit will keep your X min and X max the same, but it'll change your Y min and Y max so that you can see the entirety of the graph in that interval. You can see, of course, that there are several other zoom options, but I don't think they're worth putting in the video. See the video description if you want more details, or you can Google them. Now let's try to find relative extrema using the graph. Something that's very unfortunate about this is that it will show the limitations of the calculator. Let's find the minimum value for x squared. Of course, I can see where the minimum is going to be just by looking at it, but for the moment, let's pretend that we don't. So we go to the calc menu, which is the second function of the trace button. Now I want to find the minimum of this function, so we select minimum. It brings us to the graph and we have control of a cursor. This time one that looks like an alien from Galaga and that only moves along the curve. My cursor is going to look the same as it always has though. I can switch between multiple curves by pressing the up or down key. On the bottom of the screen is the location of the cursor as usual, but right above that it says left bound with a question mark. It wants us to tell it the left side of the interval. So I move the cursor to the left side of the curve, then hit enter. Then it asks for the right bound, so I move the cursor to the right side of where the minimum is going to be, and I hit enter. It asks if I want to guess, and I hit enter again. It moves the cursor to the minimum and tells the coordinates in the lower left corner. The way this works is I'm telling the calculator an interval, and the calculator will plug in a bunch of different values for x in that interval, and it'll tell me which is the smallest result for x. Your result might be different if you're on a silver edition or 84, but my 83 plus tells me that the smallest value in this case is actually a number that's really, really, really close to zero in both the x and y values. The problem with this being that the smallest value of x squared is zero, meaning that the calculator didn't actually try zero. But it did try 1.4523 times 10 to the negative 6. And all of, of all the numbers that it tried, this turned out to be the smallest. So you can't depend on this entirely. Maximum and zero work exactly the same way. It tells you to select an interval and spits out the answer with varying success. Now let's try to find the zero of x squared. We're going to see that there's a problem. Select left bound, right bound, and it returns error, no sign change. When it solves for zeros, it expects the function to cross the x-axis at some point, so it looks for where the sign changes to try to pinpoint the zero. The problem with this for functions like x squared, it touches the x-axis, but it doesn't cross it. But let's try this with x squared minus one. This has two zeros, so we do them individually, because this function has both positive and negative values for y, it works just fine. So let's try to find intersections. I'm going to find the intersections between x squared and x cubed minus 3x squared plus x minus 1. I put them both in y equals and select intersect from the calc menu. Now I'm just selecting curves, not intervals. I switch between them by using the up and down arrow keys. If your two graphs intersect in more than one place, you can use the left and right arrow keys to move to where you want to start looking. And it looks like the calculator moves to the left from that place, 
but I'm not 100% certain on how it does this. Those are the only commands from the calc menu that might be useful in a college algebra class. The value button is not very useful, and dy dx and the integral of f of x dx are used in calculus classes, which is beyond the scope of this video series.